Allie at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Hi, Allie. Hey, folks, let me tell you what we, the latest we have. Everything is, is moving along uh, on schedule. Uh, certainly the, the weather, hard to tell what's going on. You see the sun and then, you, and then it goes away. Certainly good and hot. And we've got live pictures of uh, the, the four members of the crew. Uh, they are now in the shuttle. They're getting all checked out and connected and, uh, and, and uh, you know, hooked up. So that's what's happening right now. It's the end of the space shuttle program. That doesn't mean the end of NASA or the end of sending humans into space. Joining me now is Garrett Reisman. He flew on two uh, shuttle missions. He's now, he's just left NASA. He's now work, working on commercial space flight with SpaceX. Now, SpaceX sort of rolls off the tongue. We say it a lot. We talk about SpaceX. Mm -hmm. We say space flight isn't finished. There's commercial space flight like SpaceX. For anybody out there who's watching who has no idea what I'm talking about, what is SpaceX? SpaceX is a company that was founded back in 2002 by Elon Musk, mm -hmm. and he's a fellow that uh, one of the guys that founded PayPal. And so, uh, after coming off that success, he his real uh, am ambitions or desires was to advance the cause of human spaceflight. So he created the company SpaceX uh, those uh, you know uh, nine years ago, and uh, since then we've developed a series of rockets, and uh, culminating in the Falcon 9 rocket, yep. which uh, is the one that we've launched now two times, went very well. Both flights were very successful, and on top of the second one was a Dragon spacecraft. So this is a capsule spacecraft, and uh, it orbited the Earth two times last December, splashed down the Pacific Ocean, and we became the first company to orbit a spacecraft and bring it back from space. So when we talk about NASA, not, and they were looking at pictures of it, uh, first of all, we should specify, when you say rocket, and around here when you say the word rocket, it's not a rocket ship, it's the, it's the propulsion device. It's the thing that that's takes right. something into space, right. and a spacecraft is a thing that's either attached to it or on top of it or whatever the case is, that is what you put cargo and people into. You got it, exactly. So now SpaceX has a viable spacecraft that can take people and cargo into space. That's right, we have both. We got it, we got it all, it's one-stop shopping. Right. Uh, we got the rocket and the spacecraft, and uh, that's something that uh, it gives us great confidence as we go forward. Is anybody booking on to do anything with you guys? NASA is. Right. Uh, so NASA is our partner, and they're providing funding and expertise to help us uh, get to the next step. And what, what my job is, I was a NASA astronaut. I left NASA four months ago, and I came over to SpaceX because I was very excited about what was happening in the commercial sector, seeing all this innovation being unleashed in, in the private industry and uh, uh, opportunities for a, a happy, uh, rosy future for human spaceflight. Right. And so my job is to convert this capsule, this uh, Dragon spacecraft, which carries cargo to the space station, to convert it to carry people. Uh, and is that, so is that the viable move over? And, and by the way, how does it work? Does NASA buy seats or do they, do, is it like a rental car? That's, that's a, a question of how we're gonna operate and that's something that we have to work out with NASA. Right. From our point of view, e either way is fine. Uh, we're, we, we're just providing the rocket and the, and the spacecraft and who actually sits behind the controls, whether right. it's a SpaceX astronaut or a NASA astronaut, that's something that we will talk about with our So are you going back into space with SpaceX? That's, that's not why I came to SpaceX. Right. Um, I wouldn't rule it out as a possibility, but uh, I had a job offer at NASA to fly again yeah. on the Russian uh, Soyuz, but I've flown in space two times, and I felt it was time to move on and give some others a chance. All right, uh, so your, what are your hopes for what NASA ends up doing beyond this? Well, my hopes are that, one, that, we, that NASA and, and, and the commercial industry uh, learn how to work together and that that relationship goes well and that we continue and uh, that we continue to be supported by NASA not only by NASA but also by Congress in way of budgets and by the administration which has been very supportive so as long as all that continues we think that within three years we can have people flying on the dragon hey uh, I want to Garrett ask uh, our control room to just go back to these pictures uh, outside of the space shuttle and inside the space shuttle uh, whichever one they want to go to first here's inside the space shuttle this is the pilot Yes. He's that's, not the uh, commander, he sits next to the commander. He's the one who spears, steers the ship and lands it. That's right, it's, uh, that's Doug Hurley. And, um, and now uh, uh, what you're looking at is on the right of your screen is the commander Chris Ferguson. On the left is uh, Doug Hurley. They're, they're the commander and the, and, the, and the pilot. Really, between you and me, it's really the pilot and the co-pilot. But these guys are so experienced and right. good at what they do that it sounded, nobody wanted to be called a co-pilot, right. so it's the commander and the pilot. Okay, so that's what they're doing, and then uh, uh, there's, we just want to take one picture outside. There's still one astronaut outside the spacecraft who's yep. about to get in. Uh, I don't know if we're going to be able to, to, to watch her getting in, but that's, how do you get in? She's going to get on that little platform behind her, lie down and get in, or is she going to... That's right. Well, first you have to show your boarding pass. <laughs> <laughs> but no, there's Sandy Magnus, and she's uh, all suited up. So first you have to put your parachute harness on. Yep. And then uh, then they uh, give you your helmet, and you, you crawl in. You have to crawl in. Uh, so she's moving around. And she's, she's checking to see that everything's working right. and moving, and Making it's not sure restricted. The, the fit is right. The harness is not too tight or too loose. 
And, uh, and, and once they tell her it's time, she's basically waiting for the other two guys to get situated. Once they're set, then uh, she'll come on in and get into her seat, which is right behind them. Got if, it. if you see in your, in your camera view right now, there's two guys in white suits. Yeah. Uh, they're standing on her seat, so she has to wait for them I to see. get out So of this way. is a matter of they've got to get out, then she's ready to go, yeah. and, uh, and we're going to see that. And they're going to sit there for a couple hours at least. Yeah, yeah, about three hours on your back. Are you constantly working while you're in there waiting, or are you just nope. waiting? No, nope. you're trying. You're kind of, it, it gets a little uncomfortable. It's yeah. not the, sitting in that suit on your back for three hours uh, is not the most comfortable thing. But you got a lot to look forward to. So that's that's, that's nice. absolutely true. All right, uh, Garrett, good to see you. Thank you so much for being with us. We we obviously are going to talk to you a lot over the course of the next five and ten years as we move into this era of commercial space flight. We are following another huge story today, and that is the launch of the final space shuttle mission, Atlantis. Allie is at Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Hey, Allie. Uh, hopefully I can bring you some good news, and, and uh, that is that the mission hasn't been scrubbed as of yet. You can see the countdown clock over my shoulder, uh, T-minus uh, one hour and 55 minutes. By the way, that doesn't mean that it's launching in one hour and 55 minutes. That countdown clock stops and starts for various very specific and valid reasons, but the countdown clock uh, is, is running at the moment. Still ahead, uh, emotions are running high today after 30 years of the space shuttle program. It's coming to a close with the very last mission. That's the space shuttle Atlantis. The uh, the last astronaut getting on board now, uh, but NASA on schedule to send Atlantis into orbit 11:26 Eastern time this morning. Weather was a worry, but not right now. The crew is on board, and the capsule will be closed in minutes. It is the final launch in the 30-year-old shuttle program. Kennedy Space Center in less than three hours. Uh, History is going to be made. Now, what you're looking at is a countdown clock, and it says there T minus 138. Uh, that countdown clock is unusual. It's not a normal countdown. Until we get really close to the countdown, it's not going to reflect what you and I really know to be the case, because this thing's not launching in an hour and a half. It's launching in uh, closer to three hours, two and a half hours, if uh, it does go ahead. Now, beyond that countdown clock, you can see the launch pad. It's in the distance. It's the only thing that isn't a bunch of trees. That's it right there. That is the launch pad. We can give you some closer looks at that right now as the Space Shuttle Atlantis gets ready to be the last thing that goes into space. The Space Shuttle Atlantis, is, uh, it'll be its last mission, and it'll be the last mission of the Space uh, Shuttle program. The astronauts are in the capsule right now. Uh, they, are, uh, they are right there. They're getting ready for it. That is the pilot. Uh, and he is the uh, he's the first person uh, he's going to be steering that thing. The commander is sitting on his left. Now, there are a lot of people around here. There are possibly a million people around here. Carol Costello is along a major road that is uh, where people gather to, to watch us. Look at that. Telescopes and binoculars. Uh, they've got a radio system there so you can hear what, uh, what Mission Control is doing. Carol, what's it like out there? You look like you're having a good time. I'm having a great time. When people told me there were going to be a million people flooding into this area to watch this last historic launch, I didn't believe them. But I do now, Allie. Take a look at this. This is just a little t uh, a strip of land right off Highway 528. And people are waiting for the launch to go off. They can see it across the water. They have a grand spot. And as you said, Allie, right over there is a big old truck, amateur radio Ham radio operators are inside. They're patched into the NASA Control Center so that everybody out here can hear the actual countdown. People are here from all over America. Come back over here, Rick. I want to show Matthew. He came from Cleveland. He's been here a long time. He's taking a little nap, as a lot of people are right now. <laughs> I can't wake him. He's out cold. <laughs> you can see some people have pitched tents. And, and we actually know the people who pitched this stuff. This is Nate and John. They came from New York. And you guys flew in, what, last night? Uh, yesterday morning. And you found there were no hotel rooms available. So what did you do? Well, once we got to the, to the airport, we started calling around. No hotels were available. So we went to Walmart, picked up a tent, some uh, air mattresses, and some Tostitos. So the male bonding thing is going um, fast and furious. <laughs> yeah, that it is. That it is. Why did you decide to come down and see this? Um, it's really, you know, the last opportunity to see something that's really a feat of mankind, and we didn't want to miss it for the world, so. Is this your first one? Yes, it is. Yeah. So why was this one important? Well, we, we've always wanted, we have like a bucket list going, and, and the shuttle launch was one of them. This is the last one, so, I mean, it's like now or never. We procrastinated this far, and it's kind of like a wake-up call.
Right He's now. getting married soon. Out. Your wife is having a shower. She wanted you there, or your wife to be is having a shower. Her shower is today. She wanted you to be there, but you're not. That's crazy. <laughs> well, you know, she she knows that uh, that this is something that's pretty pretty awesome, and she wanted me to experience it. So she's very understanding with that. And uh, I mean, I really wanted to be there. <laughs> but uh, no, no. But you know, she's being really really cool about it. Which is why you're marrying her. We'll have a great time. We hope the launch gets off. Ali, it appears the launch will take off as scheduled. Well, but we're all keeping our fingers crossed out. here. I love that they just flew in, went to Walmart, got a tent and Tostitos to uh, watch the launch. Carol, we will be uh, checking in with you a little later on. And of course, those live pictures, we can't get enough of them. The shuttle's fueled, the crew is suited up, but the weather could still cancel today's historic launch. We are live at Kennedy Space Center, hoping that it will take off in time. It's a historic day for NASA as it gets some added drama from Mother Nature. Live pictures now of Atlantis on the launch pad at Kennedy Space Center. The shuttle program's final flight scheduled to blast off in just a little bit more than two hours. But the weather, pretty iffy. CNN's John Zarell and Chad Myers are there. Uh, John, let's go ahead and start with you. NASA says they're sure. a go for the launch right now, right? Yeah, for now. And, you know, uh, what will... What would a shuttle launch be, Kira, if it wasn't for a weather issue, right? And, uh, you know, I recall back in uh, 1988 on the first flight after the Challenger accident, the flight of Discovery, we were here, and it looked just like this. There was no way they were going to go. And right before launch, the skies parted. It was clear blue, and Discovery took off. And then 30 minutes later, it was all cloudy again. So uh, I think NASA is saying, look, we're going to count this down. We think we've got an opportunity to get off the ground. That's what they're saying, and that's what they're going to go ahead and do. The crew is on board. All four astronauts are seated uh, on the shuttle. They're ready to go. The vehicle is ready to go. There are no issues, at least not with the vehicle. The only thing they're watching right now, Kira, the weather. Yeah. And, and what, do you, what are the costs of scrubbing this the thing, John? Well, you know, a shuttle launch is about half a billion dollars. The turnaround, you factor in the overtime, particularly if you're going to be going on a weekend. Uh, it's tens of thousands of dollars when they scrub and they have to turn around. But each launch is half a billion for a shuttle. And, of course, that's one of the reasons we know, Kira, that the shuttle program is going away. Right. It's just too expensive. It's, it's yeah. a costly mission, that's for sure. Uh, all right, Absolutely. John, stand by, please. Chad Myers, you're over there at the Visitor Center uh, watching the weather, of course. Uh, what do you think? Where are the storms now? How's it looking? Well, we had blue skies earlier. They have now clouded over, but we have the latest Doppler radar right here, and all the rain is well past us, well over toward Tampa, and nothing really headed here. That little dot right there, that's where we are. We are in a big black hole with rain. So if we can take that out of the equation, and all we have to do is get these clouds a little bit higher, even if they're overcast and they're not quite as thick as we are have it right now, this thing will still fly today. And somebody just walked by me. They said, I heard it was a 30% chance, but I'm still here. Because if I had a 30% chance of winning the lottery, I certainly would have bought a ticket. So there you go. People are optimistic. It still looks a lot better than it did yesterday when it rained here all day long, Kira. All right, we're keeping our fingers crossed. We've got some special coverage uh, just ahead, that's for sure. Chad, thanks. Just over uh, two hours till liftoff, hopefully. Um, our crews at Kennedy Space Center will keep monitoring uh, the launch preps and the weather for us. So stick with our special coverage of NASA's very last shuttle mission. Fingers crossed with an eye to the sky on the weather as we draw nearer to the historic final liftoff of the Space Shuttle Atlantis. Also, final countdown for Atlantis and the shuttle program. Storms, though, threatening to rain on NASA's parade. We'll get an update, though, from Kennedy Space Center. Cross for the yeah. uh, crew aboard Atlantis. They're pretty anxious to get things going, but the last shuttle launch ever, still not a sure thing. We'll bring you the very latest from the Kennedy Space Center.